Are you ready to be the best that you can be? Join hybrid business coach and consultant Charity Brown and her guest as they give you behind the scenes access to the insider tips and tricks that will help you take your business to the next level. Charity has an extraordinary approach to boosting businesses to break out of their modes, influence their industries, and become leaders of their packs. And she's ready to pass this inspiring knowledge on to you today. Learn how to change your game and build your business into what you've always dreamed of, right here on the Create Clarity with Charity Podcast. Hello and welcome to Create Clarity with Charity. Today I have an amazing guest. Devin Butler, the CEO of Arizona Entrepreneurs. Hi, Devin. Hello. I appreciate you having me here. I'm excited to dive into it. Yes. I am so excited our audience gets to hear your story because it's very relative to a lot of entrepreneurs and um, the space. So thank you for coming and sharing your, some of your secrets with the audience um, of entrepreneurs and business leaders. So Let's talk about you. I think your story is really relatable. You know, I think that, you know, coming from, you know, humble beginnings, I mean, you're from Michigan, right? And started your career as a college graduate, uh, business management. So you had a passion for business, but let's talk about your early stages. Let's talk about how the evolution happened of you being the CEO of AZ Entrepreneurs. So let's start back when you're graduating and how you got to Arizona. For sure. So I moved here. It's been about four years to this point. And really what, what caused the whole move to Arizona is I, I, like you said, I just got done with college back in Mich Michigan. I studied business management and it was the first time where I didn't have any, and I, I didn't really have any ties or, or need to stay in Michigan anymore. And I wanted to just explore something new and, and find new opportunities. So I moved out to Arizona and it's crazy that it it's only been four years. It feels like it's been much longer, but it was definitely a long, um, a long road early on with, trying to start successful companies. The first business I started when I got out here, I had this passion for entrepreneurship, although I hadn't really started a business before. And it was after reading the, the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, like I shared with you, that was the first thing that really caused that, that pivot within my thought process to where I wanted to start companies and start to build like- Were you working corporate? Yeah, so back back in Michigan when I was in college, I was I was an events marketer for a home improvement company. So um, it was like a smaller home improvement company, but that's like kind of the the college experience I had. But throughout that entire time, I was doing a lot of personal development, reading books, and that's really what sparked the the thought as far as wanting to be an entrepreneur. So when I moved here to Arizona, I started a company right away. It was a videography company. And that was the first opportunity that I saw to where I could provide value in the marketplace and also generate revenue for myself. Did not by any means go that way um, that I had first anticipated. And, and yeah, we ran that business for about three months, didn't generate a single sale. It was a miserable failure. And, and throughout this entire time, I was just like really questioning myself because I knew how passionate I was about wanting to start businesses, wanted, wanting to be a successful entrepreneur, but I had no no results to show for it off my first business and yeah. Uh, and yeah like to to keep a long story short after that started a couple other companies as well started a lead generation company and just went through a lot of business failure at the beginning and really started to realize that I need to get around other entrepreneurs I need to start to learn from people who are farther ahead than me and that's really what sparked this whole idea to do what I'm doing today with AZE yeah, and boy, you are really doing it big. Let me tell you guys out there, if you are in Arizona or Phoenix, Devin has really uncovered like what was missing. And I, I really think, you know, as we're coming out of COVID, we all want to engage and connect. And you were brave enough to start your businesses during COVID, right? So you really, you know, went through the cycle of you know, not feeling valued or success and, you know, failure kind of hit you in the face with the videography. And how do you come back from that? So how did you come back from that, especially being isolated during COVID? I, throughout this entire time, like I, the one thing I knew for sure is that I still had this big vision for things that I wanted to do in life, things that I wanted to achieve. And I know I wouldn't be able to get that from settling for 
um, you know, working a job or doing something that I knew was attainable. I had a, I had a college degree. I knew that I could go in and get a job, but I really wanted, I believed in this vision to be successful in entrepreneurship and to create freedom for my life. So that was really what pulled me. However, there was a period where all these businesses are starting to fail. Like I, I'm driving Uber, I'm donating plasma. Like I'm, I'm struggling to even cover my bills to where I like went and started applying for some jobs. And there was like a distinct moment because I actually took on a part-time job for a little bit. Like it was probably the first year living here in Arizona. And I just like hated every second of it. I actually ended up like starting a similar company to what I was doing at that job because I just couldn't, I couldn't get this like entrepreneur bug out of my head to where I was just constantly thinking about it. And around that time is when I made the pivot and I started my second company, which was the lead generation company for the home improvement industry. And then that, that company didn't, it didn't do successful by any means, but it, it definitely was the first time where we proved the concept. We started to generate some revenue and I started to see like, okay, there, there's, there's possibilities here. So mm -hmm. uh, to answer your question, it was a tough pill to swallow when I failed my first company and I'm, I'm struggling to pay the bills. Now I'm driving Uber and donating plasma and trying to figure out like, okay, what am I going to do to be successful? So I, I didn't have the exact vehicle as far as how I'm going to be successful, but, but I knew for sure I'm going to figure something out within business and and you know strong yeah. self-belief see it's really up here right it's all in our head so if you're like i know i have this burning desire to be an entrepreneur and have financial freedom like right as soon as Rod rich dad poor dad the cash cash flow quadrant you're like i can maximize my money and leverage it and yeah. i can be a millionaire and work half as much right so you're like i'm never giving up on that i'll never you give up on that, that either you ever that. exactly yeah so i love that so it really was the, the the internal fire burning that i am never giving up on my dream of this no matter what you even said some of your friends were like doubting you like you're are you really a business owner like are you sure you know what you're doing right Right? And like kind of marginalizing your freedom and your entrepreneurial drive. So I got that a lot as a female, but you know, that's the thing with entrepreneurs. We have to check out of the box and not conform, right? What society and everyone around us is sometimes doubtful in what we're doing. Exactly. So I love that you kept pushing, right? So you're like, no matter what, I'll donate plasma. I'll get my side hustle on. I'll get five side hustles. Like you just started generating your momentum. So at that point, when you're, you know, kind of like, okay, I need, I need something else. Like, you know, yeah, my lead gen business is working. You know, I got some side hustle with Uber money. Did you get a coach or a mentor or did you have like a great support or somebody that just relit that fire even hotter to make you, you know, uh, launch your new business? So there was a combination of like just friends and people that I had in my life throughout that time to where I started to build relationships, like throughout this exploration of starting AZE to where I had people in my life that were farther ahead than me and that I could learn from. Um, and in addition to that, I was in a mastermind for probably a period of around six months throughout this time. So that mastermind was honestly pivotal because I, there were, there was a coach involved with it. And I remember like one of the questions that I went to him with is like, this was around the time when I, I had started the Arizona entrepreneurs Instagram page, but that's all that, that all that it um, existed. And from there, I didn't know when to monetize, when to, you know, create a community, when to like, you know, start to charge for a membership or whatever our offer looks like. And I remember coming to him and really just having a lot of imposter syndrome on whether or not I should even start this because I was a unsuccessful entrepreneur myself. And he was one that kind of pushed me over the edge and said, Devin, you're just as capable of anyone to bring people together. You're an amazing connector. You're an amazing person and you're, you're capable of doing this. And that was something that really gave me the, the, really the clarity within myself to know that like, okay, I am capable of doing this. And um, so that was a big role. But then, like I said, I also started to meet some other entrepreneurs by building out this Instagram page. I started to meet some connections through it. And I had some people in my life who were who were crushing it in business that I could go to with any of my questions. And just having that that support and that feedback loop from people who were who were successful was very, very beneficial because I started to see the success they were having in their business. And it just made me believe even more and more that like, OK, I'm capable of doing this as well. Yeah. And that is so key. So support, you know, someone else believing in you, because sometimes as entrepreneurs, we get stuck in our own head and our own beliefs, right? And we need someone to kind of 
reframe that sometimes, just even the reassurance saying, you definitely have a viable concept, right? Like, and coming out of COVID, so you launched this page during COVID, right? And you started networking online and probably doing some organic power activities, reaching out to your tribe and building your Arizona Entrepreneurs Insta page. So audience, Arizona Entrepreneurs is um, Instagram page, check check it out. And, um, you know, make sure that you really look at these quality um, inner circle members. He's got so many great coaches on here. And so as you know, Create Clarity with Charity is all about self-development, getting coaches and mentors to help you out, to help eliminate 10,000 hours and stumbling blocks that a lot of entrepreneurs face. And I know you guys offer some really awesome member benefits. So let's talk about, I I love your story. We're going to kind of you know, now go into what you've really created here, which is like a great resource for entrepreneurs. Even if you're not in Arizona, um, you have options to collaborate online because you do online coaching for marketing, finance, pretty much how to scale your business, right? Yeah. Cool. So um, let's go to your website. So audience, ArizonaEntrepreneurs.com is um, Devin's website where you can find the exclusive community. Um, It does say exclusive for Arizona, but, um, you know, I'm kind of from Portland too. So I'll share with my Portland peeps. Um, I'm sure they would love to hear about what you're doing and your amazing trainings that you guys do twice a week. so maybe someday you'll expand nationwide, but what you're doing now in person is really cool because not a lot of p- people are doing that. So when, once you started developing your online um, presence, then COVID opened up. So now what happened after that? Tell me about how you got involved in the live events. Yeah, so it was right around that time. And that was the first time, like right when we launched the first iteration of our membership. And so we we had a community at that point to where people were basically what the membership entailed is we did a coaching call every month. We did a like a, a networking call every month where people could connect. And then we started to do a monthly networking event as well. So the first networking event that I had was to this point, probably about two and a half years ago. And it was once we started to build up this database of people and I started to realize, first of all, like. I need to go out and meet some people. I want to get connected. And I, everybody was looking for that because with COVID, we were just cooped up in the house for a long time. So we like right when some of the mandates started to get lifted in Scottsdale, I, I thought, okay, this is like the perfect time to put on our first event, I actually start to bring this community and this audience and database of people that we built together in person so we could build real relationships. And then from there, that is when, uh, you know, we did our first event. Honestly, that that helped us get a ton of traction because there was there was probably right around 100 people at our first event. And then everybody was posting on their stories and people were like, what just went down in Scottsdale? Because there was no type of like community gatherings like that for a long time. So um, mm-hmm. that's really how we got got our start in the live events space. And then as far as the membership goes, we have just pivoted and, and constantly made new iterations of it and continued to you know build it out to be more valuable to entrepreneurs and supporting them and growing their companies and, and building authentic relationships. Well, that's so awesome. And not only are you building authentic relationships, but you're giving them the tools to other coaches and, and connecting people that really can elevate the game. And mm-hmm. that's where all the value is, right? It's it's really awesome. So that that in turn pretty much makes you like kind of an evolutionary CEO in my book. And that's why you're on my show, because it is about giving back and taking those struggles and that valley low and using that fuel and that fire to help other people so they don't feel like that. So what would you tell yourself now? um, 10 or I guess you said it's been four or five years since you graduated, like five years ago when you first started your entrepreneur journey. What I would tell myself now is, is one to, I mean, it's essentially what I did, but it's just to stay persistent and to like not give up on the vision that you have for yourself, because there was a lot of dark moments when I was struggling with these businesses and just really had no direction in my life and what I was going to create. But I just knew I had this burning desire to bring something to life. So um, back then it would have just been more than anything to just like trust yourself and to continue to stick with it and continue to be persistent. But 
Um, outside of that, I would say the, the most important thing and something that I didn't start doing until I really built Arizona Entrepreneurs was to build connections with people who are farther, farther ahead than me, people who are going through similar challenges, because now by far, like the most valuable thing that I have is the, the people that I know, the people that I'm connected with. When I have a question in regards to business, I always have someone that I can reach out to if I, if I need help or support in a, in a certain area, I have people who are there in my corner so that the biggest thing right now is just um, that I would have told myself a, a while ago is to just really take relationships seriously and get connected with some amazing people that you can support and provide value to, but that you can really learn from and continue to grow from. Awesome. That is so true. There's what do they, what do they say? Your network is your net worth. So it really is true. Um, so what about those what about those business owners out there that are like timid and maybe shy? And do you have tools or resources? Do your coaches help people that have a problem connecting? Yeah. And I think that's something that I want to produce more content as well, because I understand that a lot of people feel uncomfortable in networking situations. And that's like honestly. Even me, myself, I wouldn't say I'm a, a super extroverted person. So there's times where I might feel anxious in a big social setting like that. But really what we try to create with our in-person events, at least, is an environment and an experience where like the ice is already broken. Everybody's there to have an amazing time and people are super approachable to where you can go up and just have a conversation and see how you can be of support to one another. So um like I said, I, I want to continue to produce more resources for people who feel uncomfortable in networking situations, but we try with our networking events to make it the most comfortable environment to where you can literally come and have an amazing time, but then also the people that you're going to be bumping into and meeting are going to be some amazing entrepreneurs that can support you. Yes, I love that. And not only that, you invite some of the most amazing, like the goats of all marketing, like Cole Gordon. I had the pleasure of going to your event and, you know, you, you have some really amazing people on your, um, in your event. So high quality. So audience out there, you heard it from the CEO himself, who has done an amazing job collaborating and setting up these amazing events. And they are not like, you know, what do you call them? Like, uh, they're a high vibe, I guess you would say. It's a high vibe tribe going on um, at, <laughs> at Devin's event. So check them out, ArizonaEntrepreneurs.com. Any last words, favorite books, words to live by for our fellow entrepreneurs out there? Yeah, favorite books. I, I mean, we, we touched on it before, but Rich Dad, Poor Dad, that was realistically the most pivotal book in my life because before, you know, I was, I was going to school for my business management degree. I knew I wanted to, I didn't know exactly what I, what I wanted to do. I just knew I wanted to be the boss. I wanted to be in charge. And so that's why I thought business management was the perfect route for me. But after reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad, one of the biggest takeaways for me was when he said the rich don't trade their time for money, they trade their money for money. And then also like the way to get out of the rat race is once your passive income exceeds your expenses. So then once I heard that, it was the it was the easiest concept for me to grasp because I wasn't like the brightest college student, student by any means. But once I heard that, I was like, oh, my gosh, like all I have to think about is like, what can I create now in my 20s that will generate enough passive income that it exceeds all my expenses and I can remove myself from it? So that's just the way yeah. my brain is constantly thinking these days is like, how can I just acquire assets, build companies, build things that are going to generate enough passive income to where you know, by the time I'm 30 years old, I don't have to chew. I don't have to go to work and trade my time for money. I can make it an option based on pursuing things I'm passionate about. So that's like the framework that I'm really trying to develop and, and create my life around. I love it. And that is words to live by you guys out there. Passive income. Okay. It is not a fairy tale. It is real stuff. And to find a way to generate income while you sleep and you're not the one having to do all the work, you know, you can literally invest. So do like Devin did, start a side hustle, right? Keep your dream alive and move the needle just a little bit each day, right? One win a day is all it takes. And then reinvest your money in passive activities. That literally is the success of entrepreneurship and financial freedom. So congratulations, Devin. You figured it out when you're in your 20s. Lucky you. So, <laughs> you know, it wasn't luck either. So <laughs> that was a lot of grit 
and pushing through. So congratulations and your events are awesome. So I hope my audience takes advantage of, you know, the opportunity to check you out on um, ArizonaEntrepreneurs.com. And thanks so much for being my guest and we'll see you soon. Of course, I appreciate you, Charity. All right. Have a good one, guys. Bye.